Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Decision Hour. I'm Adam, and I got a great interview uh, lined up for you today, folks. I'm going to be speaking with uh, United States Army uh, Colonel, retired, Mr. Ed Fisher from the Leak Hunting and Mountain Preserve. Ed, how you doing, sir? Good, Adam. How are you? Thank you very much for inviting me to your program. Really looking forward to our conversation. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the time that uh, you're taking out of your busy schedule to, to come talk to us. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, Ed, real quick, why don't we, I'm going to start off by, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, I am um, born and raised here in Pennsylvania, a little Delaware County, the most southeast county in the state of Pennsylvania. My uh, father was... Um, very uh, blue collar mom was same way uh, they did uh, ask me to go to college which i agreed to i went to penn state university the only university in the country <laughs> just kidding uh, not, not prejudice at all and then uh, i went to rotc through penn state and after i graduated I went right in the army spent 27 years in the army and wow all over the world uh, had some great great assignments good good places as an 82nd to uh, wasn't smart enough to tell them not to jump out of planes, but uh, <laughs> anyway, and, uh, I went to 101st uh, Air Assault, uh, spent time there, and and just about um, a lot of lot of time in Southwest Asia, but uh, enjoyed every minute of it and wouldn't change anything. Met a lot of great uh, soldiers, NCOs, and officers along the way that helped shape, mold me into what I do today. Um, retired after 27 years and. I miss the army horribly, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I started uh, uh, Lee Hunting and Mountain Preserve to help uh, veterans that have returned from the war that have suffered devastating injuries. Well, and we're we're going to get into that here in just a second, but I got to ask now what what branch uh, what branch as an officer what branch did you branch as? I I was a logistics transportation officer. Nice. Uh, but again, you know, spent those times mixing it up with all the uh, hardcore infantry guys. Right. And again, you know, learned so much uh, being in the Army and, and being among uh, some very quality and professional soldiers. Oh, oh, always the case. You get a, you get tasked as a job and you think you're going to do I was, you know, transportation. I was transportation. I was 88 Mike myself. Um, oh, okay. my whole, you know, nine plus years, uh, there. So I absolutely, you know, everybody's like, Hey, I wanted to do all the, the, the fun hua hua stuff. I just hate walking. So that's why I chose transportation. I could get a ride everywhere. Right. Up, so, you know what I'm saying? Smart, smart guy. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, th- and, and thank you for your service, sir. Um, and, and being a community hero, we, we absolutely love, uh, talking with our fellow veterans. I, I know I do. Um, now you and I had met, uh, recently at, uh, this great. year's, uh, uh, the NRA's, uh, what is it? The great American outdoor, uh, show up in uh, sure. Harrisburg. And, um, yeah. you said you founded the leak hunting and mountain preserve now in, in, you did that. It, it is a nonprofit five hundred one c three, and folks, if you're listening to the show right now, it means you're already online. Open up a browser, and go to check out their website. It's www. dot preserve. That's l e e k p r e s e r v e. dot o r g. Check out uh, leakpreserve. dot org, and uh, Ed, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, if they go to uh, the website you just mentioned, uh, leakpreserve.org, and also hit the uh, the Facebook link in there, and you'll see a lot of the pictures we started storing on Facebook. I'm just able to, you know, get uh, the word out a lot more, communicate to our audience on Facebook. So if they go to that link and hit that, you'll see all the pictures from the from the past couple of years, hunts, um, everything we do as far as work weekends, as far as uh, open house, uh, which we do families, you'll see all that on the, uh, the, the leak Facebook page. And then of course, all the general information, such as the hunts, how to apply for a hunt, uh, under contact us, the, you know, the veterans that are eligible can contact us through that page and fill out an application. Uh, like basically, uh, prioritize all the veterans that come in applying for hunts. But then we started this 12 years ago. I uh, retired in 2007 working for a private contractor. And I just started to uh, read an article in Field and Stream on 
um, a, a veterans organization that's nationally known that helps Vietnam veterans, uh, basically teaches, teaches them how to fly fish. Uh, huh. Great, great organization. Uh, <clears throat> the name excuse me right now, but that's to do with uh, trout fishing. Uh, they do a great, great job. Um, and I read that article and I just said, you know what? I can do something like this. My wife and I just recently purchased a piece of land up in Potter County. Yeah. So I wrote the uh, business plan up and figured out what we'd had to do uh, to make this happen. And my wife and I committed to it. And here we are 12 years later, just strong as ever, providing uh, hunts and outdoor recreation opportunities for our wounded and injured veterans. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. You know, I'm looking on the, on, the, on the site, there's a beautiful picture there and as, as I read through about the program and whatnot, it you guys are like you said, twelve years now, nearly four hundred acres with an additional access to thirty two thousand acres, which is is absolutely just mind blowing in its <laughs> uh, in, in itself, sir. How many how many veterans would you say you guys work with each year? Roughly each year, we can do sixty to seventy veterans. Uh, we just wow. recently built phase one of, of Dunham Hall, uh, and that houses it has four bedrooms in it. We can do approximately twelve uh, veterans per hunt, and we can do also uh, we do can do four families during the open house. So we do sometimes some caregivers, and we also do the veterans if, if they need the additional help. We had a blind gentleman come in not too long ago, and we got him a deer and also a couple of pheasants. Uh, we had him under close, watchful eyes of uh, several guides at one time. And we were able to do that. And I uh, just talked to him the other night and he just said that's probably one of the better experiences he's ever had in his life. And wants to come back <laughs> badly. <laughs> so he just had such a good time in that. But uh, we build that phase one of Dunham Hall. If anyone's familiar as Marine, they all know who Jason Dunham is. Jason Dunham was a Medal of Honor recipient from the Iraq War. Uh, Jason lost his life, saving several other Marines uh, on that fateful day. He died eight days later in Walla Reed, holding his father's hand. And he was the first Marine to be awarded that Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War. And also after that, the Navy named their first, one of the first destroyers after an enlisted man, that was Jason Dunham. He hails from Sio, New York. His parents, Deb and Dan Dunham, are still live there, and they're just they're just the salt of the earth. You know, people that will give you the shirt off the back, they're, they're phenomenal. Uh, we named the barracks after Jason, and then when we started phase one, we named the hall after Jason, and uh, couldn't think of a better person, um, Marie, to, to name our place after yeah. That's so awesome. quite the story. If you ever get a chance to read it, I'd highly recommend it. They're doing a documentary on Jason right now. Um, it should be phenomenal uh, when that comes out. Awesome. You guys got a uh, an open house coming up this summer. Uh, looks like it's June twelfth through the fourteenth. Um, yes. What 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 does that entail uh, exactly? Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about what they can expect sure. for something like that? Sure. We bring in um, four families for the open house uh, because it's important to show families too that hey, mom and dad's are, are real heroes. They're not the ones that play on Sunday. They're the ones that put their lives on the line every single day, whether, whether stateside or overseas, protecting the very freedoms that sometimes we, we, we forget. Uh, so we do, we do families, bring the whole family in and the whole week is spent focused on them. So once we hit the weekend, that's kind of what we start fundraising for the preserve at that time. We invite the public to come in, take a look, see what we've done with your donated dollars. We do a live auction on Friday night. Uh, Saturday, uh, there's a whole host of activities with the uh, motorcycle run yeah. for our first year for the car show. We do a kids fishing derby. Um, we do a turkey shoot, uh, AR golf shoot, uh, horseback <laughs> riding. Uh, the, the weekend is just filled with activities, and we ask vendors to come in. Uh, we don't charge for the vendors. If they'd like to donate something to leak, then we leave it up to them. And you know, We have a dinner on Friday night, too, as well, Saturday full of activities. Then we close Saturday night with a couple of bands that come in and play. And on Sunday, we do sunrise service, and 
<laughs> we basically wrap it up after that. But it's it's an it's a, it's a good weekend. We do um, besides the live auction on Friday, we do basket auctions and also uh, silent auction to, to help raise money uh, to put on six hunts a year in the open house uh, for our for our, our veterans. We uh, also <clears throat> besides that, we also do work weekends and Memorial Day and Labor Day. Um, we prepare the preserve for the upcoming hunts when the veterans come in, and that takes quite a bit of work doing that. Right. And right. I do this. We do it all volunteers. There's nobody paid when wow. they come through. Nobody nobody is paid a single dime. That People do it from their own hearts, and they come from all over um, and get the preserve. They, they work hard, <laughs> and, and it just it, – it, sometimes it seems like thank you is never enough, but – these people are just grateful to give back to our men and women. You know, it's, it's, it's one way to find, <clears throat> to give back, to say thank you uh, to those veterans that have done so much for us. And they just want to find a good program to do it. And, and uh, the league is one of those programs out there that is, is phenomenal program. It's not only phenomenal because of what we do, but because of the folks that volunteer and serve there, they're, they're just remarkable, remarkable volunteers. I mean, it, it really is something else. Um, Folks, again, if you're listening, go to leakpreserve.org, uh, open up another browser, and take take a look at this. And if you're in the area, um, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce what city that is in Pennsylvania, Aso- Asueo? Asueo. 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 I was yeah. really close, and that's that's uh, <laughs> that's good for me. Um, it, Ed is the is the so is the preserve. It's only oh, it's open just certain times out of the year. Then right is it or when you have people go in to get ready for an event or something like that, or is this something that's pretty, you got somebody managing that and it's it's there year round, or is this basically just this is hey this is for like the hunting season, which it which and maybe you can clarify because I think there's some people out there that say hey we we bring veterans in to go on certain hunts and this and that this isn't a year round that it's like it's during hunting season. There's certain seasons that they have is that correct well i have someone up there full time gotcha. managing the property gotcha. um but it's mostly the the bulk of the people show up during our our work weekends our open house and the six hunts that we do up there and we start in january um oh, wow. predator hunt okay uh, and then we have may uh we do spring gobbler september we do a pheasant hunt uh in between may and september of course we do our open house in june right and in october we do a black powder hunt which is kind of one of my favorite because it's the perfect time of year it's not too hot not too cold <laughs> uh, we hunt antlerless deer with a black powder gun uh, and then we switch over to antler deer with a crossbow uh, and then we do a pheasant hunt during the black powder uh, and, and last year the state of pennsylvania let us hunt bear which we did score bear during that season so they're actually hunting um, three different types of animals, but the, when you hunt both the antlered and antlerless deer, it's it's pretty exciting going after the, both. In November we we have a bear hunt, and for December we finish up with a winter deer uh, winter rifle for deer. Really? So those are six hunts that we do each year for our vets, and like I said, we can we comfortably we can handle eight per. But during like the, 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 the better seasonal weather hunts, the September and the spring gobbler, uh, we can we can do put more veterans in the hall and provide more hunting experience for those individuals. But it gets a little colder. It's, it gets tougher to handling uh, that many veterans just because of the, you know, we get we get a bit by a snowstorm in December. It's, it really limits us. But, you know, we have the rest of our equipment and vehicles that we still get them all out. Yeah. Now I, you know, if you go to the website here too, and he, here's one of the things that, that that I liked when I, when I, you know, chatted with you and, and met you at the uh, at the event, is you had a a, a handicap accessible, uh, or it was a, a kind of a track vehicle looking thing, um, on there. And if you go yeah. to the website, I mean, they, you got guys out there that that are in like these these track wheelchairs, if you will. Uh, out there hunting and stuff as well. Yeah, so that's uh, exactly. We have four of those in our program. We have three sit-down models, and we have one standard. Standard allows our veterans basically to do even more with uh, wing shooting, 
Uh, we have the right to equipment for those chairs are called attendant controls. So someone walks behind the chair and they're not to worry about hitting the control button to go forward or side. Uh, the one behind the individual, uh, the warrior, has actually got another controller that he's able to push our veteran through the pheasant fields. Oh, wow. And uh, that works out real what well, real well. Uh, you know, we bring our veterans in. Uh, and those chairs go just about anywhere. If you snow, mud, ice, it doesn't matter. And they can also tow um, a deer in after they shoot it. And that, that's oh, really? Really. <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, you want to talk about a guy that's, it may have limited use of, you know, his legs or some type of mobility issues. You put him in one of these chairs, he's able to go out by himself. Now, I mean, with a guide, uh, don't get me wrong. Right, right, right. And then shoot a deer and then be able to bring that deer back in by himself with the use of one of these chairs. And just to see the smiles on their face and knowing that they have done this, on, you know, basically on their own. They shot it. They um, they, they get the deer and they get the toe in and so we take it to the processing center and they get to watch the whole um, processing of that deer and it is a real bonus that uh, these warriors just real it just gives them a sense of uh, ability that, that they're able to do this now folks we're talking with Ed Fisher United States Army Colonel retired uh, founder of the leak hunting and mountain preserve and you, you got to check it out. You, you got to get involved. Leakpreserve.org is the website. You can make a donation uh, up there. They have an open house coming up here in several weeks. Um, we will have this up on the website, uh, Heroes Media Group website, as well as the Decision Hour social media pages and whatnot. So if you're in the area, or whether whether you're in the area or not, plan a trip, come on out, get involved. It, it, it's a great organization. Uh, I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to talk with Ed, uh, you know, at an event and, and see what they do. And, and if you go to the website, you really see just how beautiful and, and, you know, I think I might be a little bit biased because I'm an outdoor, I, I grew up hunting and fishing. So this is kind of my thing as well as I, I happen to be a vet myself. Uh, so I'm always trying to do stuff outdoors and for, for vets. So this, this ties in quite nicely with with my beliefs and everything so i gotta say this sir hats off to you appreciate for what you're doing um uh, thank, thank you very much and definitely want to thank those vet the volunteers that come in to help the veterans and 12 years doing this i will tell you that i just never tire when these young men and women come up and say hey thank you for letting me do it. i'm like man thank you for what you've done for us our service giving us freedom that you can't put a value on something like that and I, sometimes even i think that saying thank you back to them is just it's just never enough right. uh, when i first started the program uh, back 12 years ago you know i was like who a who a man will take people hunting it's going to be just great and after that first hunt i realized that it had very little to do with hunting it had to do everything with them healing amongst themselves because you know as well as I do is yeah. when you go to war, you see some horrific things yeah. that uh, it basically changes you. There's nobody goes to war and comes back the same person, and it just does. And it and it takes time, and it it, it takes um, coming to places like League to, to help them decompress, to help them talk to other veterans through their issues. Um, and it's just a sad state of affairs today that we have to. You know, recognize there's 22 veterans a day that are killing themselves because they can't handle that stress. Right. Uh, we started our own program within uh, Leak, where we have a you know a small leather bound book where they come in, they sign in, they take a picture of, of the pages, and they know that they can call any one of the individuals listed in that book if they feel any anything that they just they want to talk about. Uh, I personally have gotten calls all hours of the night, the day, uh, since we started this. And I can remember one about one o'clock in the morning, I get a ding on my phone. Um, and I look over and it's a, it's a message, a text saying, Hey, sir, you got a few minutes to talk. And they're like, man, I, I always have time to talk to a veteran, especially when he's in need. You know, I went out to my living room, sat in the chair. We, we called each other. And I tell you that we talked for about an hour, and I couldn't tell you today what we talked about. All I know is at the end, he said, you don't know how much this means. You're just spending the time talking to me. And I said, you know, you could call anytime. Um, and it's times like that when there's dark times that uh, one of our vets, any veteran is having, 
didn't call any one of us. And I just, and I've had some of them say, what do we say? Don't say anything. Just listen. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just listen to what they have to say. It, it, it's, a, um, it's amazing <laughs> the power of just listening to somebody that, that needs it. Yeah, you know that doesn't. That and I doesn't, think we're making an impact. Oh, absolutely. So, oh, oh, clearly. Clearly, you are. Sir, I got one more question for you. You're on a show. Absolutely. You're on a show called the Decision Hour. So yeah. uh, it's a question I ask everybody that comes on the show. Name a time in your life where your feet were on the line, and you had to make that decision. Now we make decisions every day. It could be anything. But what was that decision, and what was the atmosphere like for you at the time? I was on a uh, remote tour um, in a in a foreign country, um, and my uh, deputy and myself were basically told to go to the top of this ridge. Uh, we were doing some some operations, scouting operations up there. Just never felt right about the whole thing. Um, so I told my deputy, I said, "You know what? We are not going down the way they sent us up." We're going down this cliff face. <laughs> going down the cliff face in, in in the rural mountains of Georgia. And we got down, he goes, I don't know why we did that. And we got up to, to our interpreters and stuff, and they were just amazed that number one, we were there. Number two, we came down that cliffside. You know, and I can't say for sure anything that was supposed to happen happened. But, uh, you know, that was just one decision that I just, you get that uncanny feeling that, hey, something's not right here. Yeah. Uh, we came down the side of that mountain, and I'll, I'll tell you what, and I, still today I think that that was the right decision based upon, you know, some of the people we were with at the time that, you know, that we had to deal with. So, right. kind of weird. Nothing ever happened. Um, very glad it didn't. But, you know, again, it was just, you know, a decision that I had made that, it, something bad was going to happen and we had to make a decision and, and come down a different way. Um, so it was kind of a, one of those decisions that, uh, I'm, you know, you talk about, you make and it, uh, you think back on it and wow, it, it, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a visualist. I'm picturing you standing on the, on the top of this, top of the mountain, on top of a mountain. Yep. And you're like, Oh, we could take the way we came, came up, which, isn't a good feeling, but for some reason, we're going down this, this we're going, sheer cliff. We're, yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna repel down this whole thing, and it's like that just yeah. seems like the better option. That's wow. Yeah, it was, and I'm just um, again, you know, can't can never prove anything, but you know, it's one of those uh, spidey sense feelings. Yeah. That, oh yeah. If, what was where we came up was is, is not the way we should go back down again. And I uh, never saw some of the individuals that uh, sent us up there. We got the interpreters, we got in our vehicles, and we left. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Said, Thank goodness. You know, well, was, uh, I, that, one of those strange events. Absolutely. Well, thank you, sir, for sharing that with us, and thank you for all that you do uh, with the Leak uh, Hunting and Mountain Preserve uh, and for our nation's heroes. Um, any parting words before we let you go? No, Adam, just uh, thank you for allowing me to come on and, and tell you a little bit of our program. Uh, if anybody would like to volunteer, they can go to the website, theleakpreserve.org. I would love to have you. The volunteers is what makes us so special. If you want to feel like you're changing someone's life or you want to feel that, that special uh, give back feeling that you've done something, you've accomplished something, then come out and volunteer. I promise you that you, you won't be the same after you get done. But, if you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Love it. Love it. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time today, folks. That's all the time that we have today. Before we let you go, again, check out uh, leakpreserve.org. Also, got to give a shout-out to our Home Network Heroes Media Group. Go over there. Check out all the new shows, articles. Check out the events that we're going to be at uh, here over the next couple of months. Simply go to www.heroesmediagroup.com. Until next time, you've been listening to the decision hour.